the video. So I put my little singer's background behind me. Fine. Hi, everyone. Well, hey, anyway. <laughs> I'm recognizing some of the names. It's nice. I'm finally putting some faces. I know I see Melody is there, Christine. I've seen all of your names. I know all of you. You're all on a, <laughs> you're not yeah. on a mailing list somewhere, you know? Yeah. yeah. We give a lot of coin to support your art. So <laughs> yes, happily. Yes, I'm aware. I'm very, very, <laughs> very, very aware. Alan, many of us were itching to have you as a guest at our convention. First yeah, I mean, this is, this is perfect, right? Like, we, I, I don't mind. Like, I can be anywhere right now. Like, it's, I, I, I'm actually really loving this. It's great. So, like, tonight, I'm really looking forward. Like, as I think there's a panel, is it right after me with that lady that used to work for Hasbro? I'm looking forward to it, you know, just uh, I'm going to be like being, I'm the one who's going to be the fanboy this time around. We'd love to make the most out of this amazing hour. And so <laughs> let's, let's welcome Mr. Alain Tremblay from Hi. Integrity Toys. Hi. <laughs> I'm going uh, super excited. First time that you know, we've had Alon here as a guest and- We know just, you guys are like dying to pick his brain. So, so, so we'll get going. So well, yeah, that's what I'm here for. Let's yeah, do we, don't, we don't probably need to talk too much about ourselves, uh, but we've been yeah. coming to Gem Con for uh, Since 2015. Uh-huh. And actually at uh, 2015 was when I saw with my own eyes the integrity stuff for the first time. And I remember thinking, oh, I don't know. I have the Hasbro dolls. Like, do I really need to have the integrity? And it was that first time that I saw them, I touched the doll, I like bent an arm or something, and I was like, nope, I'm hooked. Nothing poses like an integrity <laughs> doll. I'm like, how can I give you all my money? <laughs> right, right. And so... Well, I could give you the email address of our <laughs> We got it. Right. Yeah. So, so that's, that's a little bit of our history. You know, it, it started with Riot, and then eventually Poppy came home with us one day and then invited all her friends, too. So it's... That's what, that's what happens. Agnes. And oh, yeah. I, Poppy is kind of... Uh, is one of my... After Jem, she's one of my big babies. You know, I know, like, I work... Well, let me introduce myself first for those of yes. you that are joining us. Like, let's do this in order. So I'm Alain Tremblay. I'm the uh, marketing director slash graphic director slash event coordinator slash a lot of things um, for Integrity Toys. I've been with the company for 19 years now. Uh, I'm actually going on 20. I believe next year is going to be my 20th year with the company. So we started from being a company that makes ethnic dolls. Like, it's always been our mm -hmm. kind of niche um that we used to be a competitor for mattel like we used to do uh like the dolls were like ten dollars fifteen dollars each and they were being sold at walmart kmart um toys r us like all the majors and they were our they were like janae and friends that was the name mm -hmm. of the line that started uh, the company uh was basically our quote-unquote uh main fashion doll and then we had like different uh iterations like we had like a a box that was sort of that there, there were like different levels that were going on like we had like you know our entry level bathing suit doll all the way like i won't say what it kind of went it competed with but you get the idea like it was <laughs> a play it was a play line fashion doll um that did very well for several years then jason Wu came on board um when he was 16 years old and that's how jason brought in the more fat like high fashion element to the company and Jason is the one that spoke to the Newsom family and said, hey, you know, you guys have a great product, but we should branch off. Like, we should be doing these more high-end things. And then it kind of started slowly. We had um, a fashion doll called Elisa. And Elisa was the first, quote-unquote, high-end collectible that we started. That line wasn't around for very long. I believe it ended when I came on board. It, it, I think they did maybe one or two collections. They're pretty hard to get, but they're more of the traditional, like big torpedo bust area, like small waist, mm -hmm. like big hips, like that hourglass figure doll uh, on an old body, I believe that was designed in the 1990s when the company first started. So that was around for about a year. And then uh, we signed the license to do, uh, there was already a partnership, but then we ended up signing a license to do a brand of dolls called Candy International. Uh, so those were like the very first, they were like the, they were like the ancestors, basically. This is where we kind of like earned our chops, like practicing, doing the couture clothes and all of that stuff before fashion royalty came out. And then 
Jason came up with the idea of fashion royalty. It didn't have a name. We just had two characters. And then I came in when I first started and said, like, we'll dress up the brand and this is what we'll do. It's going to be called fashion royalty. But Jam has always been kind of like at the back of my mind. Like basically, basically I kind of remember coming up with the word fashion royalty based on that episode where Riot is on stage when Regine has designed all of those clothes. And like the reporters ask Riot, and I think he says we're fashion royalty or we're rock royalty or something like that. And that was kind of like the inspiration behind the fashion royalty name. That's where it came from. And then I, some of you may know, like some of the story cards also um, were, as we kept going, like the story cards that I wrote for fashion royalty all had like all kinds of references to, yeah, that's rock royalty, right? Yeah. So, um, all the story cards have like references, all kinds of weird references. It's like Jerrica is basically Veronique and Vanessa's mother, but it's not that Jerrica, it's Jerrica Perrin, but wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Like uh -huh. it's, it's, it's kind of always been yeah, like yeah. near and dear to me. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, the influence for me has always been, I mean, the, the Hasbro designers did such a good job with um, G.I. Joe. All those cartoons from the 80s, I know a lot of people just discount them as like half hour long commercials to sell toys, but they were extremely well written. They were like Christy Marks, like all the other people that worked on the shows, like they, they didn't, I know they took it to heart. Like there's no way when you watch, I think we're, we're all in agreement here. There's absolutely no way when you watch these amazing stories that were written that they were just given, hey, here's a toy sell it for us. I, I don't believe that that's how it went down. Like, I think people at Hasbro at the time genuinely cared for what they did. And that's what we grew up on. And it's been a massive, I mean, I studied fashion uh, from 1990 to 1992 or 93. And my God, like my teachers were like, okay, man, just stop it with the damn dolls. Like, <laughs> stop dressing dolls. We don't want you drawing dolls. We did just, this isn't the assignment that we ask you, but it's been part of me. I've been a collector my entire life. So I kind of turned it into a career. I eventually got to the toy industry. I also worked for Mega Bloks in the 90s, like the Lego competitor, because they're based out of Montreal. So I worked in their design department for a little bit. Um, construction blocks weren't my thing. Let's call it a, call a cat a cat. <laughs> like, um, yeah, like the dolls, I've always like circled back to the dolls and they've always mm -hmm. been sort of like super important to me. And then as the company grew, we kept adding more brands and then Poppy Parker came along, New Face came along, like there's been like multiple spin-offs of fashion royalty through the years, the Voyages collection, the Atelier collection, and then it just kept sort of growing from there. But Jem was always at the back of my mind and I know we had discussed it multiple times that we wanted to do the brand. Um, and I remember like when I found out that, hey, has we agreed we're doing this, I was at a convention I think it was the fall of 2011 and then we got our few meetings with Hasbro and like eventually they eventually they were more involved at the beginning but I think they kind of started realizing that Vaughn and I knew the brand like inside out up and down left and right like there was just nothing there's nothing that they could have told us that you know when you bring people to design a product like that that loves and understand it i think that makes a whole difference in what you end up getting under where like i can tell when toy brands are being designed by people where it's just a job it shows like every single time like they have no respect to the characters like i i mean i'm not going to name names but there's stuff that i've seen out there at toys r us that i walk in there and i'm like oh my god why did that even made it make it to the market like it's uh -huh. there's just it's you can tell all the time so like um it's it's actually really flattering when you have like a company like Hasbro that just says we trust you. You guys, you know, do what you want. I have I can show you. I I, brought, I have a few things on my screen as we're talking that I can show you, uh, like how I submit my projects, like technical drawings that I do for accessories and stuff. Vaughn does all the clothing. I asked him if he could pop in today, by the way, but he was unfortunately I I asked too late. It was I asked this morning. He was like. He wanted to be here and then he goes, I can't, like, I've got this thing that I got to go to because his family near, lives nearby him. But he says hi. He told yeah, me to say, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like Vaughn basically takes care of like the, the, all the outfits. We usually will discuss like the way it goes, like we discuss how 
which outfits we think, like from what we've read you guys post on the boards and stuff like that, and what we like also, and we try to do a big mishmash of that mm-hmm. and like bring out stuff and, and interpretations of what we see from the original toy line and what we see in the cartoon. And we've been trying to sort of like make our own kind of like middle road of, yeah, this makes sense. Like this makeup would make sense or like this outfit like that would kind of make sense and like whatever. I mean, mm-hmm. I think we got it mostly right. I want to think that we got it mostly right. I know there's a few things that you guys aren't happy about that I could name that I'm fully aware that it's not, uh, but you know, it is what it is. Like we, there's like a million input, a million, like just the watching, we've been using Tubby to watch the cartoon show, right? Because it's mm-hmm. free there, right? So, and I've been telling Vaughn, like don't rely on any of the colors there because the <laughs> colors are all jacked up. And like he, he goes, oh my God, yeah, you're right. Like the colors are really, really off. Like I, I don't know where they got their feed for the episodes <laughs> they're playing on Tubby, but it's terrible. Like all the colors, they look old. Like they look like they were, they're from like a really, really old feed. So we're trying not to, I keep telling Vaughn, like if we're going to do something, look at the colors, try to pull resources from the internet uh, for like the stuff that's upcoming because we want to make sure that we're getting the colors right. Well, we all know that you care and we can see the detail in the dolls. And I will say that that to me always has shone, like shown through that not only did Hasbro care about how the cartoon and the dolls oh, yeah. were, you guys picked it up and did a phenomenal job. And we're all grateful to have characters produced that we never had a chance to get. So I think the people who have issues hopefully are in the minority because everyone I talk to is crazy grateful and loves the dolls. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, 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 I it's not hateful. It's not like, listen, you know, like it, it is what it is. It's, it's, I know, I think we're all so in love with these characters and we all have like a, a vision of how this character should be in our mind, what her face should be and everything. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't think two people have the same feed playing in their head of like, <laughs> yes, Jem should look like this singer from the 80s or Kimber should look like this person. Even the people at Hasbro, I think at first, when we first started was like, oh, like, yeah, Jem should look like this guy, this girl that used to sing this song. And I'm like, okay, well, no, that's not how I picture her. And then eventually like you have design meetings and then you're like, okay, no, let's all agree. We're going to have her sculpted this way. Like she's going to look. And then, and then the sculptor comes in and then it's art. So Uh the sculptor interprets what we've told the sculptor and then like that adds another layer like it's you know like you have to get the projects out of your head and then express them to a third person like it's it's it's, it's a process it takes a long time has uh has hasbro like rejected any of your sculpts or do they see enough likeness where they're like oh yeah that, that looks great that it's actually not like a rejection uh like when we get commentary from them it's actually like for for example for me i, I mean i can't speak to the portion of what Vaughn is doing unfortunately because he's not here and i don't want to put words in his mouth mm-hmm. uh but for me with packaging like they'll tell me you know have you considered doing for a uh, best example the 35th anniversary logo when i for the first iteration that i did did i did like 10 passes just to figure out where the 35 was going to be and everything. And I showed it to one of their designers. They were like, well, no, because if you do, if you put the logo there, like it ends up, there's a term she gave me. I can't remember what it was, but it, I, and I fixed it, you know, like I changed it. Like they were, and it wasn't like, don't do it that way. Like, have you, they were very like, Hey, have you considered that if you do it this way, it's going to cause this issue Uh during production or like, you're not going to be able to hot stamp it on a doll stand or like a, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it, I'm actually blown away. Like it's really, really, really constructive. And like there, it hasn't been a, yeah, no, we don't like mm-hmm. this. Do it again. It's that in the eight years now that we've been dealing with them, it's never happened once that I know of where they flat out said, no way you're not doing this. They've had like suggestions uh, of, yeah, hey, have you considered doing this this way? Like it would come out better. Mm-hmm. But like, and usually we do it. And that's it's, it's been great. You know, I have worked with other licensees though, where like, it's like, like we're like, they're super bitchy and like, you're, you're not, <laughs> you know, but yeah, not Hasbro. That's not how they operate. They're very, very professional. I opened up uh, the ability for you to share your screen. If there is something that you wanted to, to pull up, uh, if that um, helps walk through something. Sure. We're going to talk about the perfect match gift set. Uh, oh, yeah. 
I have to say I wanted that Riot fashion so badly. So basically, like, this is how, when I'm submitting stuff to Hasbro for approval, this is how it goes. So, like, I'm, I'm, I, I do renderings. I mean, I think I've shared that rendering when we did the um, mm -hmm. WFLOB release. So I'll explain, like, I, I'll take, like, a screen capture of the cartoon to show what the general concept of why we're doing this. And then uh, I do, like, a full-on, like, 3D render of what the packaging is going to look like. And so like that usually just showing the packaging puts the product into the environment. And then it's like, okay, yeah, we get it. We know what you're doing. Okay, go ahead or change this or whatever. But those are usually the files that I, I'll submit. Um, that's just an example. So like everything, it takes me a little bit longer to do this stuff because obviously uh, I'm not a 3D artist by any shape or form. Mm -hmm. So like I draw all of this in 2D in Adobe Illustrator mm -hmm. uh, by hand. Like it's all, it's, all vec it's all vector files basically, but like I do my perspectives and everything. Um, all So like all the modifications to the gem logo, like for example, when I did uh, Broadway Magic, the Broadway Magic logo is based on the Glitter and Gold logo, which is a painting that I did. I completely, it's not... Um, let me just pull it up for you. Um, the glitter and gold logo, when I did that, it wasn't um, yeah. just a scan of the box. I actually did a full on, I repainted and recreated the logo with the airbrush and Photoshop completely to try to get it like as, um, yeah, as accurate as possible. So this is when I did the glitter and gold logo. I just so like the, each, each little element of the logo, like the shimmers, the, let me try to put a black logo. See, every single thing is a painting. So, like, if I take it off, um, do, do you see, like, how, like, it's appearing and disappearing? Like, all the textures, the glitter, uh -huh. everything. I, I literally repainted the entire logo with the airbrush. It's gorgeous. We yeah, appreciate I, all I, of those details. I don't know if I can, is it better if I can zoom in? Like, yeah. So, see, like, it's not, mm -hmm. it's not a, um, oh. so, ba I, so basically when I do this, I do the base first in Adobe Illustrator, and then I airbrushed the whole logo by hand in Photoshop. That's phenomenal. Can, like you can really yeah, see everything. all the shading and the different, yeah, texture. Oh, wow, I never noticed yeah, the these little <laughs> disco balls. Yeah, everything, like basically I tried. So what I did, because I have the whole collection here, I'm only missing a couple of outfits from the original one from the 80s. So what I did is like I, first I started with a scan and then I went in Adobe Illustrator and I did, I repainted like everything on top of it all the time. So this is like true behind the scenes of my process here. Well, see. I know every doll box that we have gotten has such a beautiful like packaging to present it. And especially those backstager boxes when you guys came up with, when you did that idea, I was like, mm. that was awesome. Yeah, well, the, the thing is too, is like we'd love to redo like all the, um, like the original playsets or create new playsets. But unfortunately, those playsets back in the 80s were produced, like there's hundreds of thousands of these things that were produced. So obviously, the more of a skew you make, the lower your cost goes. But when we're doing addition sizes of five, 600, 700 pieces, the cost of tooling, of making a mold to do injection plastics. I mean, we did a couple, like we did, you know, like for all the accessories, we did some of the guitars, we did like the microphones and all that, just small stuff. But those yeah. big, big places like the car, the stage, all of those things, those molds are hundreds of thousands of dollars to, wow. to, to me. And, and they cost also like a lot of money to upkeep. It, you need it. It's like there's, there's teams of mechanics in China that keep like updating these molds and like basically like doing. So it, it, it's a lot to, to upkeep. Yeah. Here's a silly little detail. I don't know if I can get it to you. Hold on. So. You know, like the little sh bottle of champagne that was included with um, Glitter and Gold Rio, the first one? Yep. Let me see if I can. So this is, I'm going to blow it up at like 750% so you guys can <laughs> see the, the resolution. I love those kind of details that came with the doll. That, that, like... that's, the amount, that's the amount of detail wow. there is in just that tiny little label. That's you know? awesome. So is there a hidden Easter egg in Vuf Christoph Pomerine? Actually, what I did is that if you look at all of our brands, so I, I did it. For, I did the exact same label for Poppy Parker. I did it for East yeah. 59, and I'm pretty sure I did it for another brand. If you look, the cuvee, which is like the the, um, the vintage, mm -hmm. the year the year changes every time we use the label. 
Nice. So like if you if you have it for Poppy Parker, the label says 1960 something. Then nice. for East 59, the label says 1950 something. It says the year. So this one is 1985 because obviously Gem is set in the 80s. But That's like awesome. I, I've been trying, so I'm trying to keep like a consistency where like between each of the things that we do, um, we always have like a, a, you know, like it's really tongue in cheek. So like I'm, I try to add like as many of these little details like Easter eggs. Let me see what else I can. But yeah, I mean, is there anything else you can? I'm mean, here. Ask me questions. Well, yeah, I mean, so just for the people that don't know, I mean, all the so we have Vaughn does uh, like you said the the fashions and everything. And he's bringing those to life, but you're responsible for most of those, or maybe all of the accessories that come with. Yes. Yes. That's all mine. And that yeah. they're phenomenal, really. The that attention to detail and um, and clearly these the logos, the boxes, the instruments are phenomenal with yeah. the dolls. I mean, they just feel like little miniature, real life instruments. Like you know, no more holographic sticker. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, so so that thank you. Like the the instruments. What I did is that I tried to do as much research. Obviously, I don't know if you guys. I mean, I've never been a. Uh, I, I'm not a chatter poster like in the groups or everything, but I've been following like the truly outrageous like TO, the mailing list for years and years and years. And I know fans have done a lot of research on, hey, like this guitar is this model and everything. Mm -hmm. And that information is floating around. So you guys actually did that research for me. Like <laughs> it was very, very easy for me to go and look, yeah. So like this particular guitar that so-and-so is holding is this. Right. Okay, well then, Bob's your uncle. There you go. Find all the pictures and then send that to the factory. But um, let me just pull. I think I have some of my uh, graphic art that I can show you for the guitars also. Uh, yeah, if people haven't seen the detailing on the instruments, I mean, there's strings on them, and the drum set for Rhea is incredible. It really brings like the cartoon things to life. The keyboards are amazing for Minx and for Kimber. So this is my research information that I sent to the factory for Stormer. Because one of the things too is that I've been reusing some of my drawings on the packaging. For example, like the guitar for um, um, Pizzazz, I've used that on packaging. On the wraps, yeah. The on the wraps, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So like usually when I, when I have like the Sleep. technical drawings, why can't I find this? Sorry, I have a lot of files. If you guys saw like how big like my database is <laughs> of like of information for like everything I've sent through the years, like I could probably like pull out a book after once it's all said and done. You're, there you go, I found one. So this is oh. my technical drawing for the Aja guitar. So yeah. like some of, the, some of the details I had to leave out because there's a few things that I did that like, you know, I had like a whole back that was already originally supposed to be sculpted to it. And we ended up like taking some of the stuff out because it just wasn't, it wouldn't have been possible to do like that much detail with the way an injection mold works. Mm -hmm. but, like, so basically I draw everything in Adobe Illustri Illustrator and then I'll send on top of that, I'll send some references uh, to the factory. So for example, former guitar, I pulled a picture of a real cord and I sent it, but I also did a drawing that I sent to them because I had to, to be very specific on where like we wanted some of the things. I mean, it's still a toy, so I don't want this to be, here's a picture of what I found on the internet, do it. Like it doesn't uh -huh. work this way. Like I have to send them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah right. I wish I wish I was, it would be really easy, but that's the scanner one. That oh, is, uh, based on a Roland, but yeah, yeah. still I mean, also crazy. Yeah. And, and I think for the, the keytars, I think Roland makes some pretty awesome ones of those too. Um, yeah, I mean, I tried to figure out, like, based on the shape that I saw, like, the ones that kind of looked the most like what was on the TV show and what the original designers might have used as inspiration. I mean, obviously, we all use, like, the best way to tell a story that's, that is believable and relatable is to use things that exist for real in a fantasy environment. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, I, I don't know if it's that exact guitar that they based Stormer's instruments on back in the 80s, but it sure damn looks like it, uh, you know. So I tried to do that as much as possible. And here's something else I found too, is my original rock and romance file. Oh, that was the I love one. that box. That was a, that box in particular was a dream come true for me. 
because yeah, I was like, I, I well, who doesn't want to find a rock and romance doll in the box somewhere? You know, <laughs> you know, and, and I, I tried, we, we tried to pose the doll like in, in the same pose as like the pictures I, we found on the internet of what the doll looked like, like the, the real rock and romance. And then I redid the little images that came in that little plastic frame. And I tried to do like a few things um, to try to boost it up. I mean, I won't hide you the fact that I'm actually kind of like trying to figure out a way where we could do another one that's not rock and romance, but oh, it's, uh, no. uh, anyway, I'm not going to say I know it. you're like, and that's I, all I'm going to say. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, I love this doll. If you're going down this road again, I'm sure you'll have a lot of happy fans. <laughs> I know, we've heard you loud and clear. Yeah. I don't want to monopolize all your time. Um, so John, do, is there a select question you want to? ask from the crowd. Yeah, hey, Ellen. Um, Miranda and I Hi. are kind of producing and we're kind of going to moderate, but I'm, I'm a W Club member too. I've fallen down the Poppy Parker hole <laughs> as well as the gem hole, of course, obviously. Yep. Um, lots of boxes and lots of uh, great <laughs> things. Can you tell us a little bit about the um, Up and Rockin' and kind of the, the, the cool face you put on that box on the inside? It looks like the exactly like the vintage box. Oh, yes, of course, I can certainly do that. Hold on a minute. Let me turn off my wonderful singer's background because I had it right behind me. <laughs> Show's um, over, Synergy. So, yeah, I had it right here. Awesome. Um, so, beautiful. There you go. Oh, my this, God, that's this beautiful. Here, <gasps> yeah. This is, this is the prototype, by the way. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, we, oh, I made stunning. a model for, for production. This is the first time they printed it. So, for production, I added an additional flap here that when you close the box, it, like there's gonna be like another flap because it, see what it's doing? Like it was lifting up like that uh -huh. and I didn't like it. So before production, I added an extra flap with a magnet. So like you're gonna open it yeah. up like an old, like an old fashioned royalty box, but like, yeah. So this was very interesting. So Hasbro, this, I don't know why, there must've been a disconnect or something like that. But the first time that we did the line from 212 to 2017, they didn't give me um, any of the artwork. Uh, hmm. we got um, and I told them I have everything it's not a problem uh, if you want me to I can scan what I have I can clean up like the the images and this time around they just said we trust you do what you want they had some of the paintings like this one they have the original Sharon the wow. painting that Sharon did in the 80s so this one is not a scan from packaging this wow. one is actually the real painting that was used when they sent it to me, like I got the file and I downloaded it. It was this massive file that had like all the material <laughs> from their vault. So, hey, here's everything we found. We scanned it and we sent oh it to God. you. Oh my God. And I, I was like clicking and opening this file and going through like, oh my God, you're kidding. Oh my God, you're <laughs> kidding. Oh my God. I was like, like the, I was screaming inside. So there's uh -huh. a lot. Yeah. A lot of the stuff, unfortunately, got just got lost over time. I don't mm -hmm. know if, if they have a lot, but they definitely don't have everything. Like they have like old um, approval samples back from the day and everything. I mean, it's a lot of material. I don't know if you guys have ever met Hasbro, but they release a lot of toys. You know, We've had like, some, yeah, fashion designers yeah. on the at gem come before and it is always an eye-opening experience because when they talk about gem they do give us a lot of like a wealth of information but they're always talking about oh and i was working on this at the same time and i was in yeah. this department so we had this this and this and you're like whoa okay <laughs> a little different yeah, from I mean, the integrity huh <laughs> well with integrity the thing is the team it really hasn't changed i mean we add people to the team but nobody leaves so <laughs> like we've been it's Vaughn and I are the original two with Jason oh wow and then J Jason moved on to do his own fashion line he's still okay. involved but never in the way that we're always because Jason has a million other things that he's involved mm -hmm. with um but we're Vaughn myself then I believe David came over then Chris and then Mark yeah Mark Pinky so and like it's Jesse. the team is oh and Jesse Jesse oh yeah. my god I can't forget Jesse but we all wear like multiple hats so like each of those guys have like their assigned brand that they're doing and then I support every single one of them. So, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm, my specialty is kind of doing the licenses and stuff like that. Cause like I love, like it's, it's how can I say, there's a lot of material in a license that you're playing in somebody else's sandbox, mm -hmm. basically. Like you're coming in with a book of pre-made artwork and it's how you interpret that artwork. And I see that as a challenge. Like when I used to work for um, Megablocks before Integrity, uh, Hasbro wanted to do a line of Action Man building kits. 
And I remember they gave that to me at the time and I was like, oh my God, this is like a pure joy to work with. Like the graphic artists that they hire to do the base artwork for everything they do, like these guys are geniuses. Like I just, it's just amazing. I love working with them. All of us love the box art. And so we appreciate what you did. And I just have to say like that, the most recent box you showed us is just stunning. That is like, I feel like I'm gonna need a whole bunch more of a display room so that I can have those boxes showing. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, I hope I, I haven't seen the final, final production one. Um, I saw pictures, mm -hmm. but like, like, I know like it's, it's on the water. This one is about to be delivered. If I'm not mistaken, like we're going to have it. I know I played with the gradient in the back also, like there's more orange in this mm -hmm. area. Now the pink starts, mm -hmm. I tried to balance it and make it look as much as possible um, with the way it did back in the eighties. The reality of the matter is that printing techniques have changed. And also the way they were printing mass packaging back in the day, again, like using printing plates to print like hundreds of thousands of these things yeah. over time because they were being distributed in I don't know how many countries on planet Earth versus us using our little printers to make these things. It's almost impossible. Even if, no joke, you know, I have the original style guide that Hasbro did back in the 80s. I oh, followed wow. the, the same pen tone numbers, the same everything, and they come out a little bit different. The orange, even though I use the, neon, the new neon orange that's on the market right now, comes out being a little bit more on the brown side. Like it's not a, like it's just, I mean, let's face it, these things were done 35 years ago. Things, a lot of things like chemicals have changed since yeah. then. It, I, I tried, I promise, I really tried to get it as close to I humanly could with the techniques that we have right now. Yeah, I think it looks amazing and you're going to have a bunch of people who are going to feel like they're reliving their childhood the second they have that box I hope in their so. hands. <laughs> I hope so. I wish I had the doll, unfortunately. I only have the packaging, uh, but Vaughn really did a cool, like, with the way you flip the dress around. Yeah. Like, we had to we had to do a compromise and remove some of the layers, unfortunately, on the, Je on the Jerica side, because otherwise mm -hmm. it was just too compact, like, with the way we constructed the outfit. It wasn't, but it, I think it works well. I think what he did, and we, instead of using like a zipper of those little hooks on the back, we used Velcro because you can flip Velcro around, but yeah. it's that tiny, it's not like the cheap, like plain line Velcro, it's the high quality one, but it was like the, we had to do a few compromises to be able to, to add that motion of where like, a, like, I know we got a lot of comp, uh, of comments of people saying, why didn't you just include two dolls inside the box? Mm -hmm. But the whole point of the nostalgia is to have it's a toy, you mm -hmm. know, like the original concept. I mean, if I had it within me and we could do flashing earrings with LEDs with batteries oh. in the back of the dolls, I would totally yeah. do it. The cost of doing this in 2020, the doll mm -hmm. wouldn't have been $199, it yeah. would have been over 300. You know, like when you start adding any kind of electronics to anything, the price goes up like that in China mm -hmm. immediately. I took one of the old gem dolls apart. It's not that hard. I understand exactly how it was done. But unfortunately, when, again, when you're producing 500, 600 pieces in China versus producing how, how many hundreds of thousands, right. the game is not the same at all, you know? Well, we're very excited for the upcoming Integrity Dolls. Like I said, that riot is a dream come true, as is Rock and Curl and Up and Rockin', so. Yeah, speaking I had, speaking of which, I had, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's exactly Perfect. right. <laughs> speaking of which. So this is like the, I didn't have it when we did the sideshow thing, but this is like the star stage backdrop that I did that's based on the, see, like I had it, because you can't see this in the 3D rendering, but it's all hot pants, so there's a shimmer to it. Mm. And then, can you guys see this if I do that? Yeah. So it's the same I, holograph. Uh, yeah, it's the same holographic um, finish that's on the packaging, and it's designed to fit on the vintage. So for those of you that own I mean, I, I followed, so like the angles and everything is perfectly calculated, so. I'm very excited cool. about that aspect because yes, I do have a star stage or two. <laughs> yeah, and if you don't have the star stage, uh, you'll have like the other doll stand that I did, or you can also use the packaging that you can open up and then you can use that as a backdrop. Can you guys see this? Yes. Yes, yeah. that looks really good. That's awesome. And then one of the other features that I did also for those of you that want to, so like the doll stand, the big um, acrylic star stage actually fits in that slot here. So you pull it out and then you, you don't have to destroy the packaging to, um, 
to store your toy once you're done. And I tried to remove, there's also one thing that I, that's been really important is I'm trying to remove as much as possible of the, the disposable, the one time use plastic out of our stuff. So I know every, I've got a few comments. Well, why didn't you just put a window in your fake, um, this panel here, like this thing, I didn't mm -hmm. put a window because the window is going to be for those of you that don't keep the packaging and throw it out. That plastic most of the time can't even be recycled. It's just, yeah. They, they get it at the recycling plants and they throw it out. Yeah. I mean, if you guys, I mean, they, you can go to an art store and buy a piece of it and like do it if you absolutely want a piece of plastic. But like, I'm, I'm trying really, really hard because I, I understand that space is a premium in everybody's house and we all want these collectibles, but at one point, mm -hmm. some of the packaging has to go in the garbage. It's the nature of the beast. Um, so like I'm trying really, really hard. The other thing that I'm, I'm, I want to try working on next is those little plastic pieces that they put behind the ribbon to, uh, to secure. Yeah. That, that also lands in the garbage. Like as collectors, we've all had like a million of those things. Yep. They're, re they're recyclable, but it would be even better if they weren't used at all. So like I know like Hasbro has been like moving in a direction where they're removing all the ties, all those things that are not really necessary that just go straight to the landfill. So like that's also one of my uh, future missions for the company. I'm trying to look at that and be a little bit more mindful. Let's uh, let's go to another uh, guest question, uh, John Henry. Um, cool. Um, so I got a question about um, what, if you can tell us anything, um, Gem Con Virtual Gem Gem exclusive about what we might what else we might see in 2020 or 2021 and specifically someone asked about if we're going to see another Rhea but anything you can tell mm -hmm. us would be greatly appreciated I could but I think that I'd have to kill some of you because I know you're repeated so. <laughs> we're all over the world right now even in Australia yeah, I know it would be very <laughs> difficult but I'm a frequent flyer no, no, no. <laughs> well I mean the next set is coming out by the end of September I can say that that's it. That's all I can say. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> well, at least we're, we're hoping that it's going to be like, I've seen, I've seen it. I know what it is. <laughs> uh, my, my, my packaging for it is done. Like we're ready to roll. I, I'm just hoping that we're going to get like the finalized samples on time because that's because of COVID, unfortunately, that's been the, our, our, the bane of our collective existence mm. in the company. Mm. You know, like every year we lose one month because of Chinese New Year. So uh -huh. the whole industry is used to working around that one. But then, you know, there used to be Toy Fair would be happening during the month of February while Chinese New Year was going down. Like, that's why the whole toy industry was mm -hmm. set up that way. Mm -hmm. So that during Chinese New Year, the buyers could come in, see the toys, place orders. And immediately when factories reopened after Chinese New Year, the buyers were ready to give production numbers to factories. And then factories in China would get rolling and get the toys out in time for Christmas. That's been the way the toy industries work for as long as I can remember. But that has gone away in the last few years. Nobody does toy fair, but this year COVID threw like an added, like because the whole of China was shut down for almost four months at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. So any samples that we had going on all got pushed and delayed and pushed and delayed. That's why like our club exclusives are late this year. That's why Jen only came out like, when did we do the announcements? The first one in late June, I think first week wow. of July for yeah. us and Rockin. Yeah, early June. So like, mm -hmm. yeah, early and we've June. been working on, yeah, we've been working on stuff. I mean, my new stuff that I'm doing for the new dolls that are coming, all the new accessories, they've been submitted for months and months and months. I've wow. had samples, but it, it, it's, uh, it's unfortunate we have to wait. Like, uh, I think 2020 is a kind of a hot burning weird fire. <laughs> You guys are always so transparent about your process and it really helps us collectors to understand that you do everything you can to make these toys come to life. And we appreciate that and you know, gives us an understanding because I know some people, they don't know what it takes from you know, the conception to actually getting the doll produced. And those little tidbits really give us an appreciation for how hard you work to make everything well, come out right. Just uh, there's one thing I want you all to keep in mind is that the usual turnaround when we, from when we get our first idea for something, the fastest that we can get something to market is usually, I would say five months. That's wow. the fastest. Like mm -hmm. from, hey, we need to be doing this and 
So like if you see we do something, like when we release, when we do a release in the club, usually sometimes it can take up to a year before mm. like with the back and forth of the factory, like cause sometimes there's also a language barrier with China, like we can give them as much information as we want. Sometimes they'll interpret what we're telling them we want and they'll understand something completely different. And the sample you get back, you're, you, you look at it and like, okay, how, how did you interpret my drawing this right. way? You know, yeah, that's why Vaughn spends so much time over there, right? <laughs> yeah, and it's been so this year. That's the other problem is the Chinese borders are completely closed. Wow. So Vaughn hasn't been able. The last time he went to China, I believe, was in November or December last year. Oh wow! So every everything we've done this year has been strictly via email, uh, conference calls, uh, you know, back and forth, sending FedEx packages. It's like the old way, basically, of the. Yeah. And we're not we're not used to it. Like we're used to having Vaughn in China. It's like, okay, <laughs> hey, tell them that like, he's there. So like, the samples come in faster when he's there. Like cause yeah. He, you know, we kill the middleman, like, like he can just go and ex explain, <laughs> hey, we want this hairstyle. You'll do it in front of them, like do right. that hairstyle. Yvonne is able to do stuff sometimes that I don't even know how he does it. Yeah. Like I've seen, I've seen him like, like pull things out of his rabbit hat, like in front <laughs> and then the factory workers will go, because I went there in 2018 and like he, he has a way, like he understands how their brains work, I guess. And mm -hmm. like he has a way of explaining things that boom, we get what we want. But unfortunately, like it's kind of a an asset that we don't really have access to right now because he can't go. Yeah. So, let's get another uh, question from the audience, uh, John Henry. Um, yeah. So Holly asked about the T-shirt you were wearing with the 35th anniversary logo. Can oh. where can we get that? We want that <laughs> cool T-shirt. Oh, oh my God! I, you know how many people have asked about that? <laughs> well, <laughs> I actually I I made that. I you know I have a one of like a cricket. You know what a cricket machine is? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, so, yeah, yeah. So I basically, all I did is I took my 35th anniversary logo and I cut it on the cricket and I put it on a t-shirt. Naturally. Just because I, I never thought that I would get so Like many vinyl, words, vinyl transfer, iron-on transfer. Yeah. It's all so it's you're going like, to, you're going to have to set up an Etsy shop on the side. Yep, to get exactly. Us, get us <laughs> I, I wish, if, if it was an Integrity Toys product, I could, but it's like, because mm. of the license, like it's, it, there's a layer of complexity, like we'd have to, it's just not, let's, it's just LI wearing a gem t-shirt. That's it. Let's, let's roll on with that. Yeah. Cool. Um, is, is there anything in the, um, that we can do as gem fans to keep the, keep the line running, keep the vision alive? And also just like, what's the attachment from Hasbro to the, the gem product specifically? Like, what can we do besides buying your wonderful dolls, of course, but what else can we do to keep the brand alive or keep it expanding beyond integrity even? I, I, I wish I could answer you. Unfortunately, um, let, let's take G.I. Joe because I'm into G.I. Joe and it's going to be easier for me to explain it with G.I. Joe. So you know that what has driven G.I. Joe for the last, and I'm not talking about vintage G.I. Joe, like 1964 all the way to 1982, because that was a completely different customer. That was a baby boomer, mostly that purchased that. Um, the Gen X, our generation, we started with G.I. Joe in 1982 when Real American Hero came out. What supported that line was the cartoon. That's what cemented that portion of G.I. Joe into our collective, into pop culture. Just like Jem, the cartoon cemented Jem into pop culture. We became not just toy lovers, we became fans of these characters. Mm -hmm. I think the problem right now, so Hasbro did they stopped G.I. Joe in 1994. They restarted it around 97 or 98 as a sort of like nostalgic whatever. Then it grew. They, there was like a spy line. There was, they, they had like multiple iterations. They changed the shape of the action figures. That went on until I would say 2008, nine maybe. Then they stopped again. Like G.I. Joe went away. And now this year they're bringing it back again. But there's no support. There's no cartoon. There's nothing to make it appeal to a new generation. Hmm. So I think with Gem, the way to bring it back would be to have a movie, to have mm -hmm. a, uh, and unfortunately they've tried that, but I, it's my personal opinion that every attempt that's been done so far, it's, it, the essence is just not there. It kind of slays me too, because I get, I, I work in marketing, I get it. Like what was, when we were teenagers back in the 80s, we looked up to people that were a little bit older, mm -hmm. seeing, 
seeing, seeing kids and TV shows used to get on our nerves like it's not even funny. Kids today want to relate to other kids mm -hmm. to get their life lessons. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like if you look at all the cartoons that are coming out now, it's not a bunch of adults that are like, you know, the Han Solos, the Luke Skywalkers, mm -hmm. the Duke, Scarlet, Jim, Kimber, they're like that group that's sort of like in their early 20s and they're trying to figure out the struggles of life. Right now, kids are being told by other kids how they should feel, live their emotions and all of that stuff. And I get it. If you want to sell a toy to a kid, that's what you need to do in 2020. So where does that leave the stuff that we grow up with that we want to see? You know, I think the Mandalorian is doing a great job. It's an example of literally playing in a sandbox that is directly what we grew up with. And Disney did an amazing job with it. I don't know why we couldn't have that with Jem. It makes me sad. Like the concept of Jem is not that hard. You right. know, like it's, it's, it's really simple. It's glamour, fashion, and fame. <laughs> That's it. No hey, I started a video on YouTube and I got a career out of it. No, I mean... No well, and at Gem Con, you know, we're still bringing fans together and I think there is hope that something will come oh, yeah. out of this in the future. The more we all unite yeah. and, you know... I think it's one of the most... It's, for me, that's just great. Like, it's one of the most, like, vibrant fan base. Like, it, it's... The thing is, you guys are not just doll lovers. You're fans of a character. And that makes mm -hmm. a whole difference. You know, it's not just about buying toys that don't have a spirit. Like the, the one thing I'm trying to do right now, I've joined a lot of Facebook groups. I think I'm part of like most of the main. Uh, gen yeah, I see Facebook your name groups. come up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, um, you know, I try as much as I humanly can to follow like between the W Club forum, what's being said in the groups and all of that. Like I try to, and then with Vaughn and I sit down, it's like, okay, well, they're requesting this a lot. So I think mm -hmm. that would work. Let's do this. But, you know, we're also fans, so we're also picking things that we think are cool and would, you know, I know like the perfect match gift set, I got the comment, it's like, guy, why? What made you think that a commercial bumper was a cool thing to do? And I'm like, well, isn't it? It's isn't one of it? my all time favorites. That was definitely yeah. not my sentiment. I was like, oh my God, it's like they yeah. read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. Like, How Chris actually we... made me a Valentine's Day card with that picture, and I was just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of the, it, it's really funny, because to me, like, that commercial bumper, just in a few seconds, shows the whole triangle between yep. those two characters. It's iconic, it's so I think. It's clear. So. Crystal clear. It's iconic. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's just a, it's a moment, and I think it's a moment worth celebrating, because it is the story of that final year and I think where the show would have gone had it kept going mm -hmm. that whole like love triangle and I was in love with that when I was a teenager it was so much fun so I'm going to throw a bunch of things out there I have so many people sure. so interested and yeah. you kind of pick which ones you want to talk about um Anker, one of our staff is always goes as wedding Kimber he wants to hear the story of wedding Kimber <laughs> um you can talk about boy versus girl properties kind of in the G.I. Joe gem like kind of is there a difference in how we handle those things um, are you planning to use some more of the original art and some of the stuff that's coming up, if, if you can tell us that? And then Playline versus high-end collectibles, like what's the difference from some source as well? So any okay, of that you want I, to talk about? Okay, okay. Okay, I have no memory, so I'm going to start talking and okay. you re-ask the question, okay? okay. So I'll start cool. with the last one. So, okay, so per Playline versus collectibles. So the difference between the two is Playline is hard. Mm -hmm. Playline, you know, I know they're cheap toys being sold at Toys R Us, but if you guys only knew the amount of work that goes into packaging, because when you're doing Playline, you have to think about the grandparents that are going to be picking up the toys. So what's going to catch their eye on, eye on the shelf? If I put the toy inside the box this way, then there needs to be a line look. There needs to be an eye-catching element. There needs, just from a marketing perspective, the suit that goes into making a play line toy is so complicated. I couldn't even, like, I could teach a class on how, like, you know, like if you position that logo in that corner, it does this. And then there's, oh, well, you need to have a small part warning in this area. A small part warning needs to be 30% for the entire surface of your toy. It needs to be, there's all kinds of rules and regulations. There's all kinds of testing that needs to happen, a drop test, blah, 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 blah. With play line, with, with collectibles, as long as you put 15 years and plus on the box, 
we've got way more latitude, you know, and it's, to me, it's much more fun because that's where you can get really creative. You can be more whimsical. If you want to remove certain elements, you can take them out. You can, there, there's less of a pressure of having like this thing, because obviously it's not, most collectibles at this point don't make it to the toy shelves. They're all being sold online. So the packaging is more of a nostalgic feel thing, a playline item that has to appeal to a parent, a grandparent, an uncle, uh, an aunt that doesn't know anything is just walking into Toys R Us and they think that they're doing good by buying this toy, but they bought, they bought you a GI Go instead of GI Joe because they couldn't tell the difference. Mm-hmm. So that's why we have all these knockoff toys that are around you know, like, it's like all the knockoffs, like some of the knockoffs for the gem line, by the way, from the 80s, like they slay me. I wish I should have bought, picked up and purchased some of them through the years, because when I see pictures surfacing of the knockoff gem toys, it's just some of them, like, especially the ones I have one that has like a baby's body inside a head. And then the baby's body is inserted into another blow molded doll. I don't know if you guys have ever sold. It's a superstar doll that were sold in baggies yeah. that had like the factory. I literally have one that doesn't have a neck knob. And when you pull on the head, there's a baby's body that comes oh. out from the inside. Oh my God. I, it's, 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 it's atrocious. It's, like, it's, it's so it's bad. Horrifying, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so does that answer the question a little that, bit? Yeah, I think so. Um, original art, are you planning to use more of like, like that, which you did with um, Up and Rockin'? You're gonna have to wait. Okay, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, and then boy versus girl properties, is there some different way that we kind of approach those? Gender is a construct, I know it's kind of. Mm, I would say, cause we've done like, we have like our male fashion collector line. I tried to have, to keep the, 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 the packaging more masculine or anything, but honestly, like we've done so much like LGBT stuff. Uh, you know, we've done the drag queen stuff and everything to me, like it's all kind of like blended as far as the way my brain works. To me, I, it makes no difference to me. Like, all I know is, like, I'm trying to keep, like, the archetypes of this should be super feminine and this should be more masculine. But I don't think anything we do has that differentiation. I think it's everything is us. It's me. It's the integrity style. So you want to tell us about Wedding Kember a little bit for Anker? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, what's, mm-hmm. what's the question? What would it <laughs> like, her? how does she come to be? Anker, if you want to unmute and ask the question specifically. Yeah, I was just curious because I know that was always like a uh, fun fashion and like it was never officially made previously. So it was like one of the ones. As to why we made her? Why and how it came to be. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, like with the, the Hollywood gem episode is one of my, uh, like all of our, it's one of our favorites. And it's kind of like, I feel like Hollywood gem was kind of like the cutoff where everything stopped after that like there weren't really Hasbro kind of stopped making toys like you know we got toys all the way up or more or less just up to Hollywood Gem and I love it's my it's one of my favorite episodes and like when we did it we were like well okay what's iconic what are like the the touching stones and that so like the first one was Hollywood Gem that we did and then we decided to revisit those episodes and Kimber seemed to be like the most opulent and honestly we hadn't done a wedding doll in a really long time and we thought well maybe that might be a good segue for people that are not gen fans because a lot of people do like wedding gowns and I think it worked too I think we we managed because that's also the other problem is that gen styling is so specific that there's a lot of doll collectors that don't want to have to do with the vintage doll line or the new doll line because the fashion sense is very specific to Jim. Um, so it's very hard to convince a Poppy Parker collector or a fashion royalty collector to get into Jim. Uh, so like we try to pick styles that we figured will appeal to as many people as possible mm-hmm. while keeping Jim fans happy at the same time. So like that's kind of a fine balance. Uh, not everybody is into fantasy hair colored dolls. Um, so that's the other big thing too like there's people that come to us because they want realism in fashion dolls so with that's why we have I think we're we've got is it six or seven brands right now with Jen and we tried to have a brand from like every era so that we're touching like everything in fashion that people will want and enjoy so that's why we've got like you know East 59 that's based in the 50s Poppy in the in the 60s um, then Jen in the 80s 
fashion royalty is not defined and we did that on purpose so that 10, 20 years from now, the collectibles that we produce will still be relevant. So we try to keep fashion royalty and new face on trend, but I've never actually said this brand is happening in this period of time. So like in the story cards I wrote, you'll see there's barely no mentions of, of cell phones or technology or anything, just so that I, we could keep fashion royalty kind of timeless. So Kimber came along with that thing in mind where I'm like, okay, what would people at large enjoy? What would gem people love? And Wedding Kimber was it, basically, yeah. We are running a little over. If you have to run, I understand. I don't. Otherwise, it's Sunday, you got you got me all day. So then, then I think we got about three more hours worth of questions. <laughs> um, let's let's stick exactly. around for ten minutes, maybe, and um, <laughs> and see what we can get to. Can you tell us a story, um, Alain, about um, an alternate sculpt or outfit or fabric or something that really you had to start over with with Jen? That's one I want. I wish Vaughn was here. I know with the accessories, I've had to do corrections, especially with the guitars, like with them not getting like the, the, the angles of the head correctly and stuff like that. But I've never had to, to flat out say like, no, this is, I've had to have things like readjusted where like items weren't like the size where like I've sent them dimensions that I thought would work. And then when I got the physical object in my hand, I was like, okay, yeah, wait, no, that's too big. We need to go smaller or wait, no, this is small. Like we've, you know, like this doesn't work. Um, but yeah, that would be more of a Vaughn question, unfortunately, than an Alain question. I'm cool. sorry. Um, yeah. th someone asked also, um, why did you choose to use the color infusion body for gem specifically? Um, it was originally the gem body, just so mm -hmm. you know. Uh, <laughs> color infusion came second. Uh, and we kept using it for, um, for, we call it the color infusion body, but it was sculpted for gem originally. That's great. Yeah. And what, what's different about it? Why is it, why is, why was it for gem? Um, there's no difference. It's identical. So the only change that we've done this time around is that before it didn't disconnect at the shoulders and it didn't mm -hmm. disconnect here in the breast area. Mm -hmm. Now it completely comes apart. So like the change that we've done with the new ones, it's 100% compatible with the old line. Mm -hmm. The only thing is uh, what we've done is just to be consistent to make sure that it's the same uh, for all of our other doll brands that if unfortunately should something happen and there'd mm -hmm. be breakage or anything, it's honestly, it's better for the environment. It's better for us, better for everyone. If I need to, I can, I can just send the lower torso an upper torso or send an arm or like whatever. I mean, no joke before, when before our dolls used to be, um, you could take them apart, customers would return entire doll bodies and I would take my Dremel tool, like if a hand was broken, I would drill the piece out, repair them and send them back out to customers. Alana's asking, what's the most controversial gem doll that you've made? Like something that you got a lot of blowback for or that people just really reacted strongly to? I think for me, I would say Clash with the orange hair that you guys wanted mm -hmm. pink hair. Mm -hmm. uh, that was one, you know, like the one that has like multiple mm -hmm. color hair. Mm -hmm. I know we, we heard a lot about that. And I know Dent was another one that I think there was something either we, because we didn't include the cape or there was something you guys didn't like with, with Dent. Um, what was the other? Oh, and Eric Raymond, poor Eric in his head move. <laughs> that was the yeah. one I was going to guess. Yeah. The yeah. 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 I thought dance was amazing. So. No, there was something with dance. I remember, wasn't it yeah. like because there was a belt missing or there was mm -hmm. something? Then wasn't there like something that you guys weren't happy about because of dance? Not us guys. I can <laughs> chime in if you can hear yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, I think it was the hair color wasn't bright enough. Like the colors weren't as prominent as people wanted them to be. I think. Mm. Oh, that might have been it. Yeah, that might. I mean, it, that was unfortunately with the current techniques that we're using. Um, a lot of the factories in China have stopped using a lot of hair colors. Mm -hmm. So like they're, if you, they'll do it for you, like if you want to, you know, I, oh, I want like this specific shade of pink, they will do it, but you better order like 10,000 billion yards of it. And then mm -hmm. yeah, sure, like they'll do whatever you want. But like, if you come in and say, oh, I just need a couple of hundred yards because like we're doing like a few dolls, they'll just say, no, here's our stock list of colors we got. You pick from those lists. We're not mixing a new color for you. 
So um, that, that's also you, what you were asking me about, about with collectibles, that's the other thing that the difference is. That's why like sometimes we do accessories, they have to be made out of metal. They can't be made of injected plastic because the quantity is too small and um, the mold to make metal parts is far less expensive than doing a mold for injection plastic. Even though plastic is cheaper once it's done, the getting to injecting plastics is incredibly expensive. What's your personal favorite Hasbro fashion for Gem or the Misfits? Um, I actually, when I was a kid, my favorite one was City Light. The, the one with the little yellow uh, dress and uh, the trench coat. I, I don't know why I love that one. I thought the stockings were really well made. They, the stockings look like stockings a real woman would have worn. And it just made the doll look her best, I find. It was perfectly fitted. It was great. You know, like you could put the hood over Jerrica's head and it was believable that it was Jerrica mm. because like the hair was probably hidden. She didn't have like an awkward hat that you have to shove like the pink hair into. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I think that was absolutely. And for the Misfits, my favorite fashion. Um, which one did I? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The one with the, what's it called? The little gold bra with the, the black skirt and the black top. Ain't misbehaving, yeah, yeah. Just misbehaving, yeah. I know. So I guess I'm into slutty stuff. I guess I don't know. I love... <laughs> those, are both, those are both pretty slutty, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, right? <laughs> Uh, pe yeah. People are asking about uh, more about the inspiration for the remainder of this 35th anniversary line. Anything you can say about you know, outfits we've missed or characters we need to revisit or anything you want to so, say about that generally? Um, right now, our current plans, I'm going to tell you, we're only doing A characters. So when, I, when I mean A characters are like the main players, we, we don't have any B players and C and D players. So we don't have any dance, any videos, clash. Um, like, like uh, all of the, um, like the support characters of the TV oh. show, like those are not currently in our plan. So I'll leave it at that. Um, but we are, I, I'm, our goal with this 35th anniversary thing was to definitely do stuff that we didn't do the first time around mm -hmm. um, and do outfits that I don't think any of you expect that we're doing. Like we didn't want to just say, Oh yeah, right. Let's do a city light. You know, I don't think it's necessary to redo city lights. I think the first one was perfect. You know, like it's it would be great to have it fitted to our dolls. I would love that. But I think there's still a plethora of things that can happen for the brand. So we tried to print to pick like stuff that we could do cool prints for. You know, like stuff that you know, like the, the those of you that do custom outfits. Right can do easily by just buying solid fabrics that don't need to be printed. We have access to printing facilities that a, a normal person or like a the layman wouldn't have access to. So we, we've tried to bring in like printed clothes as much as possible. Like we've tried to use like different printing techniques that we start, started using in the last few years with our other brands. We tried to bring that into what the dolls you'll be seeing next. We were joking about some of the patterns too, because Chris always says he wants the the one I call uh, bananas and pajamas. It's the, it all depends on the mood. The Rio, uh, the Rio. Oh, the Rio one. Oh my god, yeah, the one the one that was being sold for like ninety nine cents everywhere. Like <laughs> yeah. I know here here in Montreal, like the last year when the line got canceled, you'd go somewhere and that's all that was left in the stores was that the banana outfit. Yeah, I, re I remember that well. Yeah, that and the KGM radio station. I remember like the Cajun place that was being discounted everywhere here in, wow. in, in Quebec. I don't know why. It was really weird. Like I got my, um, my Cajun place at back in 1987 and I think I paid $7 for it. Um, Elaine, it's so obvious from all the gem stuff you've done since the beginning that you're such a good gem fan. So we just like, we embrace you as part of our community. We just oh, think you're like you. a gem con person. Thank we just you. like feel the love and we're so happy to have you here for the first time. Thank you. It's just been such an honor because you're so obviously a gem fan. We just, we can tell. So thank you for bringing it to life. I think it's like the power of one person to kind of bring our fantasies and our visions of our childhood to life for us. Like it's emotional talking about it because it's been so oh, important what you've yeah. done. And like, thank we you. all, we all appreciate you so much. Everyone on the chat is just loving what you're doing and so grateful for that. So I just wanted to say that for myself and on behalf of everyone for that part, it's just obvious. And we just thank like, you. we love you. We thank you so much. Oh, thank um, you. 
Um, so a I couple hope you're going to love me even more by the time uh, we will. Gonna, we will. I, I <laughs> hope by the time the year is over, you're going to love me even more. I'm sure. I'm so, sure we will. I'm sure we will. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's yeah, possible. We're gonna get off mute and say goodbye. Thank you. Have fun, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.